Hey guys, Pablo and Zira with BND and what are we doing today, Zira? We will be talking about entitled parents on their feeding grounds since even low lives still have to eat. Very nice. So what should we call this episode? We will call it Entitled Parents Feeding Frenzy. We're in a 100% vegan restaurant, so my son should be able to eat a McDonald's hamburger here. A little bit of backstory. My sister owns a 100% vegan restaurant in Sitges, Spain, near Barcelona, and the restaurant name is Spicy Garden. For those who are wondering, she told me this story of an EM and EK coming in here to eat. When they came in, they seemed like normal people. A waiter hands them the menus, and they start looking at them. Sometime later, the waiter comes back and asks if they're ready to order. Here's how the conversation went. Are you ready to order, ma'am? We can't find anything tasty on this menu. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that. Is there any way I can help? Well, I was wondering if I could get some burgers from McDonald's and come in here to eat them since we're here. I am sorry, ma'am. You're not allowed to take outside food with you into a restaurant. This is a vegan restaurant, so it wouldn't be good either way. You can leave if you like. Excuse me? I am your client, so I can eat what I want here. How dare you tell me not to do that? Ma'am, please don't argue. As I said, this is a vegan restaurant and you're not allowed to bring outside food. If you don't leave in the next minute, I will be forced to make you leave myself. The EM and EK leave the restaurant. I am still weirded out to this day as how would that EM have the audacity to eat meat in a vegan restaurant? Edit. Thank you for the silver, kind stranger. Add it too. Thank you for the gold. You know, guys, I really don't understand how people can just assume that just because they're sitting in a restaurant, they own the freaking place. And most of them, they're not planning to consume anything in the goddamn restaurant. What do you think, Zero? They are jackasses. I agree with you. You included. Hey, come on. EM tries to fire my dad from his own restaurant. First of all, English is not my primary language. Some contest here. My parents owned a restaurant that closed like 14 years ago. It was a small business, but being in a busy road, it gets a good number of customers. It's important that you know how the restaurant worked with the orders. You go to the counter, take an order, and you go sit in a table. And then your food is ready, you get up and take your food. And then you can either stay or eat your food somewhere else. If you eat somewhere else, you had to pay when you pick up your food. The food you could buy there was like breakfast food, ice cream, pancakes. For the staff, there was my mom, my dad, and sometimes other employees. Because of this really small number of workers, my parents had all the roles possible with the manager's one. They cooked, they served, they took orders. So it was summer. My parents, with two cooks, were the only staff members on the restaurant this day. The restaurant was very full at this moment. And then, it's a monster. It's the devil. No, it's a caring with her. I want to speak with the manager haircut and three kids of like five to seven years old. Already at the start, she didn't look like a nice person, but boy, oh boy, she was even worse than I thought when my parents were telling me this story. When she arrived, she ordered enough food for a complete buffet, choosing extra food here and there. Then they go at their table, having ordered a lot of food. It took a long time before they can eat something. When their food arrived, they ate like one-fifth of what they had ordered, my dad says. But when the time to pay arrived, that's when it all begins. Time to meet the cast. Dad, an intimidating guy, but who is actually very nice. Mom, not so intimidating, but very smart. EM, entitled mother. Me, wait, I wasn't even born. So my dad came to their table with his book, where all the orders are reading. Then he announced it. So lady, it will cost you 101 and 35. Will you pay by card or credit? 101 dollars? Yes, ma'am. Will you pay by card or credit? I won't pay that much. Uh, sorry, but you need. My kids deserve this food. How can I feed them if it costs 100 dollars? Sorry, but... I know the owner, so you should give me a discount at least. Sorry, but we can't do the... I want to speak to your manager. Someone with more authority than you. My dad then turns around, goes in the kitchen, and then comes again and says, I am the manager. I will ask you to pay immediately. EM huffs and pays before leaving by screaming, I'll get you all fired. It would already be a good story of entitled parents, but too classic. Too classic for me to post it. You know what that means? It's not finished yet. 
the next day she come again, but this time with a random guy that nobody in the staff knows. Not even my parents. My mom came to talk to them. Hello, can I help you? I am here with the owner, and he wants to speak with your manager. Yep, she said that. So we have another person I'll call FO for fake owner. Sorry, I think I misunderstood you. What did you say? I am the owner, and I want to speak to the manager. My mom, very confused, go find my dad. She again thought she misunderstood the lady. Hi, do you have any pro- I am here now with the owner. Yeah, I'm the owner. And I fire you for being rude with my friend. Yep, they did that. They really did that. EM came with a fake owner and tried to fire my dad. Um, is this a sort of joke? No, absolutely not. Did you hear? You are fired. <laughs> you got me. Now it isn't funny anymore. No, it's real. Now go away off my property. Sorry, but you can't fire me. Yes, I can. Are you sure? Yes, I can. <laughs> That's funny, because I am the owner. Their mouth were about to hit the ground when he said that. They were so confident in them. Bam! Shut their mouth. They tried to run as quick as possible, but my dad quickly grabbed them by the shirt and pulled them inside. Now, my mom, dad, and the co-owner that came after my dad called him did a long conversation about how that's not illegal but they wanted a caution of $300 for what they tried to do. After that, they quit it as quick as possible. TLDR, EM is mad because she had to pay $100 for what she'd eat, so she come the next day with a fake owner and tries to fire my dad, who is the real owner. Postscriptum, if it is as it tell, it's because my parents wrote it in a book so they can remember it as it was. I read your comments too, so don't keep yourself from saying what you think. Edit. Holy woman, this is my second most upvoted post and I got my first silver ever. Thanks. Edit 2. Holy womanly woman, a second silver? All of that in one single day? Y'all get wound by our god Arsuf. Come on man, did these people really think that nobody, not even the manager that worked in the restaurant, would know who the actual owner was? I mean, they're stupid and they're entitled parents stupid. Entitled family arrives late to restaurant, the man's Wi-Fi insults my great-grandparent, they end up paying 20 times the price of the menu. Good morning, Reddit! Just allow me a few disclaimers before I start. First, have in mind that this story takes place in the north of Spain, Asturias, before I will try to give the necessary context so the cultural barrier is as little as possible. Second, that this is my first post in this community. Third, I'm Spanish, so please forgive me for any orthographical edit. It's orthography, face palm, or grammatical mistakes. However, feel free to point that out to me if you want. This got longer than I expected. I'm missing an XXXL tag. Now, let's get started. First of all, I'll give you out some context. So feel free to skip this and go directly to the story. This took place a couple of years ago when I was 17, and I used to spend part of my summers helping in my grandpa's restaurant. The restaurant was located in the bottom floor of our family house in a little village, their inhabitants, and my great-grandparents, the parents of my mom's mom, lived in the upper floor. In the restaurant, my great-grandmother and my grandma were in charge of cooking, and my great-grandparent and my granddad were in charge of attending the tables. It was kinda small, and it was like eight tables of four on the inside, and we could set another two outside if the weather was good. As a restaurant also served as in a bar, it was filled with locals, and as many of them were retired, they used to spend a whole day playing cards and drinking beer or wine, so although it was a small location in summer, usually was full of people. Also, please have in mind that my great-grandparents founded this restaurant in the year 1941, therefore it was well known and had a good reputation among the locals. I'm also proud to say that my great-grandparents were very loved in their community, as they really were great people. Although it was a quite remote place, in summer, we used to get like four or five groups of tourists per week, and the rule was that my brother and I were in charge of serving their tables, as we were the only ones who knew any other language than Spanish. Our opening hours at the time were from 12 to 20 to 30, but the kitchen was only open from 13 to 15, and from 1930 to 2100. We only served one menu, composed by a starter, two main dishes, dessert, and cider or water, at 10 euros. So now the story. For convenience, I'll use the following abbreviations. EM, 
Entitled Mother, EF, Entitled Father, SK, Spoiled Kid, 7 years old, GGP, Great Grandparent, M, Me. It was around 1600, therefore, most of the customers had finished eating and were chatting over a cup of coffee or some liquor. My grandparents and great-grandparents were still eating, as they waited until everyone was finished. Therefore, my brother and I were in charge of serving the tables just in case anyone wanted something else to drink. Suddenly, we hear a car outside and I can hear a woman loudly speaking in English. As soon as they enter, this happens. We would like to have a table. X from the YZ told us this was a great place to eat. I am sorry, ma'am, but the kitchen is already closed and it's kind of late. Yes, it's late because we got lost in these damned roads. It is so difficult to put proper signals. Also, we have a little kid that is hungry. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that. Let me check if I can do something for you. I then went inside and explained the situation to my grandma, who told me to attend and as everything was already prepared and it would be just heating up the food. Well, are you going to give us a table or not? If the kitchen is closed, how is it that those people are eating? Pointing at my grandpa's? At the moment, I thought she was behaving like that because she was kind of hungry and I wasn't really used to dealing with rude people, as the majority of tourists used to be really respectful. Well, those are the owners, so they can eat whenever they want. I said this while laughing a bit. Anyway, I have just asked them and you'll be able to eat too, so please follow me to your table. They follow me to the table and I explain to them that there is only one menu. They give me a strange look, but they seem okay with that. I serve them the bread and I put a bottle of water on the table. They start devouring the bread, so my they're really a bit rude because they're hungry theory seems to be confirmed. As soon as I bring the starter, EF demands to have the Wi-Fi password. Hey, we have seen that there is a Wi-Fi network, which is a password. Uh, yes, there is one. However, the Wi-Fi is for the staff personal use. We had a measured and really slow connection that had like 5 gigabytes of data, which my grandpa used for checking some newspaper and my brother and I used for sending whatsapps to our friends. That's bullshit. We're paying customers and we deserve to have access to the Wi-Fi. Yes, our little angel wants to watch some videos. We don't have any kind of internet access here. Uh, sorry, but as I have said, it's for personal use. That's not right. This would be unacceptable in America. Well, I'm sorry to inform you that we're not in America. The EM tells something to the SK and then starts running around the restaurant stomping his feet and shouting. My great-grandparent comes to me and asks me what is happening. I explain the whole situation to him and he asks me to please translate what he's going to say. Please, lady, control your child or I'll have to ask you three to leave. Don't you dare tell me how to raise my child, you dinosaur. Don't get close to my child, you old creep. By this point, everyone is, of course, looking with disbelief at those morons. I doubt for a second, but translate all of this to Great Granddad, expecting a not really nice reaction. Instead of saying anything, he slowly turns around and asks two men who are sitting on the table to take the whole family out of his restaurant. I proceed to explain to the family that if they don't get out, those two men, who also happen to be two guardian civilians, like rural police forces, would be taken out. They don't seem to believe that those two men were policemen and they refused to leave until we served them. Finally, both men stood up, showed their plaques, and asked them in their best English to leave. EM, EF, and SK finally stand up and leave. However, as they were leaving, the policemen realized that they had parked in front of our garage blocking it in a zone signaled as no parking zone. They decided to ask for their rental car papers while taking a couple of photos and giving them a 200 euro fine for blocking a private property garage. Okay. This ended up being far longer than I expected. On my behalf, I have to say that I have family in the US and that all Americans I have met in the United States are really nice people, so please don't take this an American bashing post. I hope you all have a good day. Look guys, uh, I'm also American, I'm actually American Brazilian, and I'll say it's not everybody. The problem is, and the most when people go to Europe, there are some people, and that's a very small percentage, that kind of destroy it for all of us. It gives us a really bad reputation of entitlement. Just if you're not American, just understand it's not everybody. But we do have people like that, okay? So I apologize for every single American. And if you disagree with my apology, you're the freaking problem. Hey guys, that's the end of this episode. And now with you, Mira. Thank you for watching. Subscribe if you haven't clicked that bell notification sign and leave a comment if you like the video and let me know how much better of a host I am than this chauvinistic pig. I'll see you all tomorrow.